In this movie you'll see that you could create from a mass family a shading device. This is something that you would physically place in the model at the location that you want. And it could be any shape that you want and it can be driven by parameters that the user is able to provide values for. I'm going to create a simple shading device. On the application menu, new family it's a mass family and in that family what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the plane active by selecting and then switch to a right view so I'm actually now drafting on that plane uh, that location here that I'm pointing to is the origin of the shading device that's the point that the cursor would be at when I bring it into a project what I'm going to do is draw a rectangle and making sure that this is switched off make surface from closed loops just to draw my rectangle and I did that because if I wanted to this would mean that I could do something like say uh, you know add extra geometry to the sketch itself if it's a surface I couldn't do that but right now I'm going to leave it just as a simple rectangle First thing I want to do is I'm going to say, why don't you align, if I'm using the align command, to the other plane that's there, that edge, and I'm locking it. That means that now the sketch will be fixed at that location. That edge will be fixed at that location. I'm then going to put in some dimensions. The dimensions I'm thinking of are the ones that a user might want to be able to, to change and adjusting the shading device. So, for example, I'm thinking that that there would be depth. Uh, this here would be the thickness of the material. And from here to this location would be the height from the ground level to the underside of the shading device. So that the dimensions are a first step in creating the parameters. If I pick on the dimension, I can go up now and say, add the parameter that I'm going to call depth. I'll pick on this dimension and say add the parameter that I'm going to call thickness. And then the last one here I'm going to add the parameter that I'm going to call height. And these are all tight parameters and I'll show the significance of that in a second. Um, you want to be able to verify that the model itself reacts or behaves the way that you anticipate. And the way to do that is to go to the family types, or FT. These are the values. So you see, for example, I adjust the thickness to something like uh, 6 inches. And then I say apply. You'll see that it changes the shading device thickness. If I change the height to say 12 feet, you should see it move up. And if I change the depth to say 6 feet, you should see that it stays stationary at the end where it was aligned and then the dimension drives the change to adjust the, the depth from that edge uh, outward as it were. So if I turn this now so that I'm looking at it in 3D, What I want to do is extrude this. So if I pick the actual line work, you've normally been doing this kind of thing on a, a level, but you can do it from reference planes or anywhere. So now if I go create form, solid form, I'm just going to grab that red axis and pull it towards me up this way. And you see that now what I've got is I've got an extruded uh, dimension to control the size of this. Uh, shading device. If I just pick on it again you'll see that I can turn a temporary dimension like the overall length of the shading device into a permanent dimension by clicking on the the icons there then selecting the dimension itself add parameter length and it's not obvious but at this point in a normal extrusion, the sketch 
that we started with was copied to the other side of the extrusion and I can show that it's a, a copy and not a relationship that's fixed between them by by dragging on the end like that. You see I can have that one shape but I can have this a different uh, a, a different size I should say. It's the same kind of general shape but I can change it. So if I if I actually wanted to make the relationship and the behaviour that this drives that then what I do is I tab and select the edge that has the profile within it and on the form element here I can say lock profiles which means that I'm locking them together so that a change made to one will affect the other. Right. I can see I've actually done that by, by picking on the edge here. I'm going to drag it down. You see that because I'm making a change to one of them, the change is happening on the other. Now, in this example, I'm going to actually use the dimensions to drive the geometry. So it's important that you check that. So remember, I went back and I said if I made the thickness as uh, six inches. And apply. I'm now seeing that change applied to both edges of my shading device. Just before I go any further, let me make sure that I save this. I'm going to say save as a family called simple shade. I've already got one, I'm just replacing it. So there's there's my family name here. And the reason I did that is so that when I load it into a project, it will appear under the mass families category as simple shade. And uh, other people will know what it is, as opposed to say family one, family two, where nobody knows what it is until you, uh, until you open it up. Um, so what I wanted to do at this stage was to show how I could make multiple options for a user. Now there's, there's different ways of doing this, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the parameters so that these shades can be placed in your mass model for energy analysis, but I want to make it so that the user can individually change the length or change the depth of the shade itself. Um, I'm going to leave the other ones as values that are um, more or less fixed, but don't or, or fixed between families, but don't change for each instance of the family that's placed for each instance of the shade. So the way I do this is that if I look at the values that are here, um, let's just change that to twelve at the moment. You see that it's driving the geometry. Let's say I change that to twelve as well. So I, I could have multiple types that the user could pick which type of shade they want, but because I want to use just the one shade called simple shade, and for each instance let the user change the length and the and the depth, then what I'm going to do is pick on the length parameter and say modify and change that to be an instance parameter. It means that every instance of the shade can have a different value for the length. I'll do the same for the uh, the depth. So picking the parameter, modify, change that to an instance parameter. Right. So now if I were to bring this into a project, if I say load into project, I'll just use the default one that was open. You see that I can place it. Show this. So what I'm doing is I'm actually placing the origin which is on the ground plane, level one. And because of the way that I created the shading device, you'll see that when I pick it, I can see the two values that I said are instance values. So if I wanted to have in one case 15 feet, or if I wanted to have in the other case a shading device that was maybe four feet or one that was one foot 
you see that I can adjust those parameters. So the, the reason I wanted to create those is that in the settings that you can apply to a glazed opening, you can certainly go and say, oh, I want a shading device that is a certain uh, thickness, and it will simulate something, uh, uh, sorry, a certain depth, and it will simulate something that's a bit like this. But it doesn't give you the flexibility of creating custom shades that you can go in and place over openings uh, where you control the form of the shade itself and the size of the shade. And it's important to have that kind of option um, and be able to add those to your model before you do an energy analysis.